up next, we have uh, Sid Jia, uh, CEO at Arbol Market. Uh, there was a lot of talk in the chat and in that last panel about weather data, so I'm really excited for this one. Arbol recently introduced uh, a parametric weather insurance product for farmers using Chainlink to bring that weather data on chain. Arbol uses the power of smart contracts and Chainlink to provide a technological solution to real world problems. Sid, welcome and please take it away. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, um, thanks everyone for giving me the chance to talk here. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. Um, so as Andrew mentioned, I'm the CEO of Arbol, a uh, company we started uh, over two years ago with the idea of revolutionizing how insurance scales and you know, how do we get insurance to the, to the broader masses of many types that are not available currently. So uh, what Arbol does is it connects farmers and businesses who are exposed to weather and climate risk with uh, you know, uh, capital providers on the other side. And you know we'll get into why this was necessary, but the starting point for Arbol really is innovative products that allow clients to get paid when bad weather strikes their farm or business. And the goal really is to make sure that you know it's done in a clear, transparent way, uh, you know, removing many of the downsides of traditional insurance. So you know the question then is, what are the downsides of traditional insurance? Why do we need a different way of doing things? Um, when you think about, you know, most of our lives are spent in uh, urban areas where a lot of our lives are insured. You know, you have health insurance, you have insurance against home damage, uh, and a whole host of other services that allow uh, risk mitigation, allow, uh, you know, someone to plan for the future without having to worry about, you know, random events that can really set you back years. That's not the case in most of the world, you know. So when you think about uh, uh, weather, uh, so weather affects the livelihoods of two to three billion people. It causes hundreds of billions in damage, and uh, even in the crop space, uh, uh, which are obviously very affected by weather, almost a trillion dollars with a trillion with a T uh, are, are uninsured every year. So for a large uh, percent of the earth. Uh, you know, the populations are exposed to random events that can set them back uh, years and sometimes drive them to bankruptcy, one bad drought, one bad rainstorm, and so on. So the question really is, you know, why hasn't traditional insurance been able to address this? And this is becoming more and more necessary, of course, as weather volatility rises, as climate change takes hold, as cropping patterns shift, and uh, this is all, you know, part of the uh, movement to build resilience against climate change and against uh, rising weather volatility. So the question is, how, why doesn't traditional insurance fix that? Well, the way traditional insurance works is it's not very scalable. You have an adjuster who has to come to your farm or business and assess the damage. This is a really big problem when you're trying to scale this model. It works very well in certain high density you know, uh, developed markets and is growing certainly in the uh, sort of urban areas. But when you're talking about weather and climate risks, you have businesses and farms that are far flung and uh, you have obviously a lot of chance of fraud disputes or delays. You know, uh, with COVID obviously these delays have only expanded, but it's very difficult to wait for months while someone can make it to your farm. Often, you know, you as the policyholder have much less power than the insurance company who's deciding this payout. It's completely subjective. And so, you know, the host of problems that happen here make it very difficult to scale this model. And that's why you're left with lots of businesses and farms facing hundreds of billions in losses every year due to bad weather, things that can be addressed via new technologies and big data. So that brings us to what is called parametric insurance. And that's what we focus on at Arbol. Arbol is a platform essentially for parametric coverage. What parametric coverage means is instead of a human being coming to your farm or business, you are getting paid based on data, right? So uh, a simple example would be, I'm a farmer, I need uh, you know, rainfall in July to, uh, to happen. And if the rainfall data as measured by you know, a very hyper local data source says that it was lower than, you know, uh, five inches of rain during that month, I can get an automatic payout. 
this kind of coverage can be expanded to all sorts of businesses. You can have a you know leisure vacation business that's worried about too much rain during summer season. You can have a power plant that's worried about a uh, heat like how they have to power in the sale market. It could be a wind farm where too much wind speed, too little wind speed is a problem. The turbines don't spin fast enough. So all sorts of different businesses and farms have these risks that they carry and parametric insurance is the way to scale this. You know, you need to bring data into play. Now, five to 10 years ago, this was really not feasible. You, you, your data quality was not great. The uh, technological systems didn't exist. And so, you, you know, the timing we felt was right for Arbol and, you know, the advancement of things like smart contracts, things like blockchain really brought forward uh, you know, uh, the, the ability to have this done in scale to build an actual marketplace uh, for this kind of insurance. So the question would be, why do we need to build a marketplace? Why haven't the traditional insurers realized this and just done this kind of, uh, you know, insurance uh, where they can? So traditional insurance is not great at building distribution uh, apart from the, the stuff that they already have going, like autos and health and so on. And this is a new type of uh, coverage. For many, many uh, decades, uh, businesses have just assumed that weather is a random act of God and you cannot do anything about it. That's changing and needs to change rapidly, especially as you know different climate patterns come into play and things you didn't anticipate start to happen more and more often. So when we talk about something like parametric insurance and we look at the current state of it, it's only 5% of the insurance market and the big problem is uh, there's three big problems lack of access uh, extremely opaque and very very inefficient so inefficiency is where you know i'll start with because that goes into exactly where you know chain link fits into uh, with arbol and then we'll refer back to the other two problems and see how arbol is helping to combine all of these issues and bring together a full solution so when you look at how this market operates, there are agents, brokers, uh, you know, all sorts of different intermediaries that after all is said and done, your insurance premium can be 30 to 40 percent uh, higher due to fees. Everybody takes a little bit of fees everywhere. And smart contracts are a great way to reduce a lot of that uh, inefficiency in a very quick and clear manner. So, you know, you have smart contract. We have smart contracts that connect to different weather data sets and decide. Okay, well, uh, during the month of July, certain weather data sets said this or that, and that's in the contract, and that determines the payout. Um, when we started doing this uh, in 2018, we found you know the whole space of oracles was very disorganized, very unstable, and it was just honestly very difficult to get a clean, elegant solution. And so we were very happy when you know Chainlink, uh, we partnered with them to develop our first product with them, which is uh, using one of the data sets that is widely used in the farming sector. And you know we envision uh, you know more and more such products as we get into things like wind energy, as we get into things like uh, you know uh, various uh, other industries like leisure or uh, shipping and um, you know host of other weather data sets that are needed. Beyond that, the second generation of these sorts of insurance products will come out, which is you know, things like using satellite data of your property, uh, things like using sensor data that's you know, collecting data right from, say, a tractor or a combine and measuring how much output the farmer had. So all, as these data sets grow and the complexity grows, you know, the idea is that our, our partnership with Chainlink will grow with that to allow us to tap into more and more data sets where reliability and uh, you know auditability it becomes very very important you have you know imagine if you're doing a insurance program with sensors you have millions of data points coming from thousands of farms each of those needs to be clearly audited time stamped because you have different parties who need to figure out and make sure that why the payment was made if if any so you have a reinsurer who might be involved we are involved the end user wants to know why. So as these complexities rise, as different types of data come, and that's going to be key to broadening the scale here, 
right? You want to get more and more specific data down to the farm level, down to the property level, down to the uh, you know solar plant, where the end user feels more and more comfortable that this data set will actually reflect my losses and not, not subtract this. So that's a key, you know, a key factor we wanted to start with. It's a, the, the lowest hanging fruit here, which is that let's get the efficiency into the system. You know, there doesn't need to be so much manual claims processing, it's just data. And then the question is, okay, let's say we do that. We have a platform that does that. How do you actually get distribution? How do you actually build a business? The concept of Arbol makes, you know, at least to me, a lot of sense. But the question is, how do you get, you know, uh, someone who may not be familiar with even uh, a lot of the technology that we work with, let alone blockchain, how do you actually get that connection between what we are doing here, our conferences here, and a lot of the real world where, you know, that's a very different world out there where, where you're dealing with farmers, agribusiness, you know, uh, renewable energy plants, and so on. And so the, 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 the uh, other problems I mentioned, which was access and an opaque system, um, and uh, I'll actually share my screen here. So when we talk about, you know, how do we get to the other two problems, which was an opaque system. You have a oligopoly of a few reinsurers who control this market. And you have essentially, um, you know, the, the, the access is highly limited. So only the largest and most, uh, you know, uh, only the largest corporations and power plants can really access this market. So if you have one to two million dollars of premium to spend, you have, uh, you know, you will get the calls back from the reinsurers. If you want to spend $500 on premium, if you want to spend $1,000 on premium, the question is, how do you actually get these contracts out and really sort of, you know, uh, how do you get an actual price for these things? And that's where, you know, a lot of what we do is understanding, uh, you know, the marketplace and how do you bridge that gap? And so one of the things we did was, you know, we, we have a team that has decades of experience in commodities, insurance, in uh, obviously technology. And the goal was to bring forward a team that truly encompasses the expertise we need to make sure that our products appeal to the end user. And so we're, we build a lot of custom products where, you know, you have uh, people who can join in different plans, almost similar to how you would have a health insurance plan. So when you have, uh, you know, when you have something like, uh, you know, uh, a, a standard rainfall contract, nobody is going to know how to actually set that up. So that's a big part of, you know, uh, how we try to bridge that gap between, say, what Chainlink offers in the data and how do we customize a product that is actually usable for a corn farmer, for a vacation rental business, or a host of other types of businesses. Right? Maybe in the corn product, you actually need to preload certain parameters for different varieties of corn. You know, it's, it's not easy enough to say just, uh, okay, well, it's low rainfall, so the corn will have a problem. Um, the other part is pricing. And we have a lot of proprietary pricing models that allow you to get a price for you know, e even the smallest deals. So you come to Arbo and say, I want a $500 premium. Uh, I'm going to pay $500 for uh, a policy that will pay me, let's say, 5000 if there's a big drought in my area. Well, the pricing for that, you know, we reverse engineer what the rest of the market is doing. We do a lot of work on weather modeling ourselves and a host of other issues that need to, um, you know, need to be incorporated. That price that you get allows you to join a pool that goes larger and larger, and that's what gets, uh, you know, sent out into the market. This is the key bridge between a $1 million or a $500,000 contract and a $500 contract. This bridge allows the smallest guys to join the pool as the uh, size of the portfolio rises. And that's what, you know, that's what makes it, uh, uh, makes it possible for us to give access to even the smallest businesses. And as, you know, as these things grow, uh, as our distribution grows, these portfolios become more and more diversified, more and more valuable. Why? Because weather data and, you know, essentially weather contracts 
are considerably more diversified than anything you find in mainstream markets. You know, stock and bond markets move very much together, more and more so lately. There is just very high correlation across regions, across markets. And, you know, this market, imagine, uh, you know, staking different weather contracts. In the future, this, I believe, will be the next, you know, phase of DeFi. A lot of DeFi has been focused on building uh, products that basically take what was the problems in traditional finance and making products out of them in the DeFi context. The next stage will be totally new products that really get capital where it's uh, extremely necessary. This market needs capital, and it's one of the things that we are working towards in the future to truly decentralize the capital aspect and really get the best prices for um, you know, a whole host of customers. And for the capital providers, this is extremely uncorrelated to stock markets, bond markets, and then, uh, you know, coin markets. It, it, they, they have a completely different risk profile, and they're all short-term, and they basically pay out and cycle many times a year. So, you know, uh, a drought contract that, you know, for the next season, then the next one could be excess rainfall contract for a different season for a different crop. And this is all over the world. So, you know, uh, that's, that's the general idea around how Arbo operates. And what the goal is, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, with companies, uh, you know, like Chainlink, where for us, Chainlink was the ideal oracle to really scale to new data sets. And as I mentioned, as we grow things like, um, as we grow, uh, grow into new types of data sets like sensors and satellites, uh, the sort of the, the way uh, that we access those will become more and more important and the auditability will be extremely important for the, all the different users in the system. Um, and so, yeah, and finally, you know, I guess the question would come up is, uh, you know, is this still a concept or have we actually done any business? And, you know, we have done, uh, we went live about six months ago, we've done about 200 uh, deals, uh, about 13 million, 1, 3 million of risk. And this is uh, pretty much with farmers, agribusinesses, and a lot of real businesses that are many times using our services for the first time to basically get either supplemental coverage or coverage that just did not exist before. And, you know, the, it's, it's always rewarding to work with uh, the, the huge variety of crops and uh, businesses that we work with, you know, work with cotton gins, work with corn, soybeans, wheat, uh, you know, a lot of specialty crops, different fruit crops. And, you know, we see ourselves, uh, you know, working on both sides of the divide, if you will. On the one side, you're working with really innovative companies like Chainlink uh, to make sure the back-end processes work well. But on the other side, we work a lot on distribution and making sure that we actually do touch uh, upon these different industries that whose needs are growing in this area uh, day by day. And uh, yeah, I'll stop there. I think uh, it's, uh, again, a pleasure to speak here. And uh, please let me know if you have questions. Uh, anyone can feel free to reach out. Thank you, guys.